I want to thank you all for coming today. We're, we are really excited to be kicking off a series of what we're going to call these informational sessions or technical sessions regarding our company, our software, and we want to inform you about various technologies that are being used in product development and manufacturing. So my name is John Graham. I'll be walking you through this introduction and giving you a background of Entopology, the company, and a couple products we offer. Next, we will be talking about implicit modeling. Alex Mekis, who's one of our application engineers and who handles some marketing, uh, he'll be walking you through that. And finally, Jonathan Harris, our lead application engineer, will walk you through a demonstration and some examples of the software. And then we'll wrap things up with that question and answer time. So let's go into a little background about Entopology. We are a rapidly growing software company. We're making design engineering solutions for advanced manufacturing. So we started in 2015. We're based in Manhattan, New York City. And we have this goal of creating a better product development system that's driven by data and physics. Now, our mission has to do with helping engineers better define, represent, and lock down various engineering processes digitally. Do we accomplish this in a couple different ways? We, we do it by combining elements of design engineering simulation and advanced manufacturing and this digital process that makes engineering knowledge reconfigurable and reusable by other engineers in an organization you know down the road i might succinctly describe this as a smarter or more efficient use of data so data is kind of that key word i'm using now that's who we are it's a high level 10,000 foot view of who we are and what our mission and vision is and what we've set out to do so regarding some of our products that we have and topology is probably best known for creating an application called Entopology Element, which enables engineers to easily create optimized lattice structures for additive manufacturing. You can do some really slick and exciting things in that application. Now, from there, we took that software and our learned knowledge for it, and we created something else called Entopology Platform, or Entop Platform for short. I would probably best describe this application in three ways as far as what it does and what its benefits are. High performance geometry, regardless of complexity. So if you have a simple or complex model, pretty easy to create something in NTOP platform. It also allows for connecting engineering systems, sort of those CAD or design functions with simulation and manufacturing outputs all in one environment. And then finally, capturing engineering workflows, which you'll see a little bit later, and we'll, we'll talk about those in more detail. Now, in all honesty, each of these probably warrants several of these technical informational sessions like we're doing right now. And we will be doing these at a future date. And this is sort of the kickoff of a, of a cadence, regular cadence of these sessions that we'll be doing. So please be on the lookout for them in the future. But going back to that word data, that's really the common thread that I would say that you see between these three benefits and then top platform. Now, if you think about it, data is everything today. For starters, you have to capture it. You have to understand it, use it properly, configure it, optimize it. And the list goes on and on with things that you can do with data. And all those are very important. In Entopology's products, we are providing this environment where data can be integrated and locked down, where data is used to create these high-performance designs, where data is efficiently connected between design, simulation, manufacturing functions, and where knowledge is adequately captured through these various manufacturing processes and workflows to be reused and reconfigured. So again, the main topic today is implicit modeling and what in, implicit modeling, this technology really benefits all three of those bullets that we've got up there. But today, the main focus is really on that first one, how implicit technology will enable that high performance geometry. Now, I'm going to turn things over to Alex and he's going to walk you through implicit modeling in a little more detail and help define it and so you can get your arms around it. Alex, let's turn it over to you. Thanks, John. Hey, this is Alex. I'm an application engineer at Entopology. Today, I'm going to go over the core technology powering our software platform, our implicit modeling kernel. I'll try not to go too deep into the weeds here, but the way we're representing and working with geometry is fundamentally different than existing design tools. So meshes such as STL files are essentially patches of 2D triangles stitched together in 3D space. Um, they are hard to work with and don't contain a lot of useful engineering data. 
They also get extremely heavy and clunky very easily. B-reps, which are the backbone of most feature-based modeling tools, also use patched together surfaces, but compared to meshes, B-reps are not confined to triangles and can be parameterized and made into a continuous surface. Because B-reps are still patches, there are similar, similar limitations when it comes to making big model changes. Geometry is easily broken. Implicits, however, are 3D mathematical fields directly. It's geometry creating, created using functions and modifying the functions. Because implicits are function driven, they're easy to keep up to date with the latest engineering information. Making design changes with new data at any level in the design process is one of the main benefits of implicit modeling. Other key benefits to implicit modeling are the ability to create complex geometry at any scale, exact resolution, things like Booleans and offsets also never fail, and, just, and it's extremely lightweight to work with, and the file size is also extremely lightweight. So this, this kind of, this is a picture of a design of experiments where um, around 200,000 parameters were changed, changed and there was a 100% successful model generation. So this kind of touches on all those different powers of implicits. Um, so rather than uh, go through a bunch of slides on our software, I'm going to hand it over to Jonathan Harris to do a live demo and go over the NTOP platform and the implicit uh, modeling kernel behind it. Hi, this is Jonathan Harris, Lead Application Engineer at Entopology. Let me walk you through our latest software product, NTOP Platform. So first of all, I want to give you an overview of the different categories we have here. As Alex mentioned, there's three different ways of representing geometry, and we play nice with all of them. So you can bring your meshes, you can bring your CAD files in, or you can model natively and implicit with operations that you're familiar with. Lattices, gyroids, honeycombs, and all other cellular structures, that's really we, where we got our start as a company, and that's a big aspect of NTOP platform. Simulation will be making a big impact in the software, and that will be the topic of a future webinar. We have mathematical operators to work closely with these implicit representations, and we have utilities to export these as meshes or as contour slices for direct manufacturing. So let me show you this part. We have a connecting rod here with, a, uh, with an infill pattern. The way our software works is, uh, and why it's so robust, is that we have this tree of nested functions or, or blocks. And what this means is that you can have uh, different aspects of your geometry represented here and parameterized so that you can make quick design changes and always count on the model rebuilding. So here I've switched the infill pattern and it regenerates without issue. In a conventional CAD system, selecting these edges and trying to apply a fillet would be quite the, uh, quite the task with an infill like this. Here, all we do is actually just combine these two regions with a logical operator called a union. So here I've added this blend, and this is going to be guaranteed uh, for whatever other model changes I make here. So all this geometry is being generated in milliseconds. What we're waiting for with this loading bar is just the view. Let me export this as a stack of contours for additive manufacturing. Now, this is a good time to point out that this whole model, while it is in dimensions and units of length, there's no concept of tolerance here until we actually export it, either to a mesh for simulation, for rendering, or as slices for manufacturing. The concept of implicit modeling is that you store exact geometry and you can operate with that at any time. So here I'll just enter the discretization tolerance and the layer height for this process. So what makes this so fast is that all we're doing is really intersecting this mathematical field which represents our part 
with a plane that goes up through the build layers like you'd expect with an additive process. So of course, if I wanted to manufacture this, I just turn this layer spacing down. Let me show you this, uh, this in action on another part and how we can apply really lightweight, stiff structural geometries to any sort of shapes. So here we have a honeycomb sandwich panel, excellent high specific stiffness and good for multifunctional applications such as thermal problems. So this again is parameterized so that instead of having to select edges to add fillets, suppose you're concerned about face and core delamination as you have in several sandwich structures, all you have to do is parameterize the model, press enter, change the number, and you're guaranteed this solid model every time. The way we can guarantee it, and I realize that is a strong word, is that since these are purely stored as fields and functions, there's no concept of the model edges leaking. This is one continuous field. What that enables is that we can remap it into different conformal spaces and coordinate systems with ease. So here I'm going to just curve the panel a bit. We can do a double curvature with some synclastic curvature here or anticlastic. It really doesn't matter. If you can picture the coordinate space or the transform or the geometry that you have, we can get it on the screen and out to manufacturing. So here, even after this complex warping, all my parameters in the model are still linked up. So you can change height, all of this happening in milliseconds, infill patterns, and of course the blend radius. All right, so this model was made natively in implicit format, but we understand a lot of workflows start with a BREP from some other CAD system or from some previous part. So let me show you that in action. So I'm gonna import this nozzle surface from a rocket motor. And say I wanted to add some conformal stiffening ribs, maybe something like an isogrid pattern. All I have to do is parameterize this surface. This gives it axes to plot my lattice on. Click conformal lattice, drag and drop. Now I'm gonna enter the spacing here. Let's start with 40, 40 around the ring, 40 down the axis, and how about a two millimeter rib? Now I just select the unit cell and you've got your geometry. So this lays out the skeleton for this ribbing pattern, which you can then apply variable thickness to, variable height to, whatever you can imagine. You can see updating that unit cell is essentially instant here. Okay, so what happens if we have an upstream design change? Say this nozzle gets changed to have some different diameters here. That's again, no problem. I'm just gonna um, select this import the new model, and you can see the diameters here are, are different in that CAD model. I mean, this works for any geometry that, that you import too. Uh, once you have this workflow set up, you can parameterize things as variables and send this out to your team to, um, to access what, what you've got set up here. So with that demonstration, I'm going to hand it back to Alex uh, to conclude this webinar. Thanks, Jonathan. So as we just saw in that live demonstration, the it really showcased the core benefits of implicit modeling, the ability to rapidly create complex geometry. There's really no fail geometry or rebuild errors. You can just make design changes at any part um, in the design process. It's highly scalable and extremely lightweight to work with. So as for next, I'm gonna Next steps, I'm going to pass this back over to John Graham, and he'll be able to moderate a series of Q&A sessions. Alex, Jonathan, thank you very much. That was very informative. Uh, guys, we've got a lot of great questions coming in, so I will try to uh, triage these and throw them out to you as best I can. 
Um, one good question. Do you have any additional resources for learning about implicit modeling? Either of you want to take that? Yeah, Alex here. I'll go ahead and take that. So Blake Quarter, our VP of product, is uh, working on an, an entire blog series around implicit modeling. This is just very high level going over implicit. It, you get really deep, and Blake will be going over a lot more detail about different aspects of implicit in that blog series. Okay, great. Um, regarding the outputs of files, uh, the question is, can you slice the implicit model or do you need to export the STL file first? Um, so that's the benefit of, of this, really. You can slice the model directly. The problem with slicing an STL is that you first have to discretize the model to get the STL, so you're introducing inaccuracies there and then you slice it and get another layer of inaccuracy. Here we just slice it once, so the tolerance you enter on that contour slicing is the tolerance of your part, provided the manufacturing uh, equipment can comply to that. So that's a big benefit. You're working with exact geometry up until the final step. And also, if you've worked with SDL files before, especially when it comes to finally detailed parts, they get heavy extremely quickly. So just going directly into slicing kind of avoids that often tedious step of working with SDL files. All right, that's great. Thanks, guys. Uh, another question that came in, can specific lattice geometries be specified? So I, I think that means can we create our you know, your own custom lattices? Um, so we ship with a library of uh, quite a comprehensive library of lattice unit cells. You can, of course, create your own as well and import them. Um, that was a big part of Element Pro, and that is still in NTOP platform for sure. What we've added and what we're working on now um, is a robust way of selecting that unit cell and guiding, guiding the engineer to the right choice of lattice topology uh, for their given part. And I think that will probably be the topic of our simulation webinar. No, yeah, definitely. no spoilers there. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Boy, lots of great questions, everybody. Keep them pouring in. I don't think we'll be able to get to all of them, but uh, we can certainly do a couple more. Another good one. How do I get access to the software if I'm interested in checking it out? So we're currently running pilot programs with uh, customers. If you and your organization are interested, just get in touch after the webinar and we can share more details around that. All right, great. And another question about um, an API. Do we have one for automating some of these workflows? So that is coming very soon. Uh, you can kind of see the power of it, the potential of an API just working through it now. But it, it's definitely something uh, we're actively working towards. All right, great. A question about cl the cloud. Uh, is everything we're showing today, is this cloud-based or is it local? And what kind of specs uh, do you recommend? running the software. So everything shown here is local. Um, currently, the software is all locally run. This demo is run from, um, I'd say, a mid-tier mid laptop. Uh, Spec-wise, the more CPU cores you can throw at it, the better. This is all multi-threaded to the max. Um, RAM requirements for implicit is actually quite low. Uh, a good GPU would be recommended, though, because we're ray tracing these, these fields. Yeah, so any, like, your standard CAD workstation will be able to handle oh, for this sure. without for sure. any issues. And um, also, it, it's a standalone application. It's not a part of another design tool. Great. There's several questions regarding the export file types uh, that we offer. Maybe you guys can touch on that briefly. Yeah. So as far as meshes, you know, we could do... STL, um, we're one of the first adopters of 3ML. Um, so any real mesh file type. And we have some, like, one, we do um, adaptive meshing by default. So they're extremely lightweight meshing to start. Um, and also, we could do, oh, wait. And then also, as far as slicing, right now it's CLI. So that's working with kind of concept laser machines and other machines like that. Um, and then I think Jonathan has a note around 
um, some of the simulation export capabilities too. Yes, so this will be the topic of our simulation webinar, but to give you a preview, exporting uh, meshes, either beams, shells, or solid elements, uh, that's all within reach here as well. Okay, great. Here's a good one uh, that you guys can answer. What allows this to be so lightning fast and lightweight? Yeah, so I think Jonathan mentioned it a little bit earlier. So, you know, when we're working with the software, there's no real, there's no meshes in the background. Um, it's really just fields and then rendering those fields via ray tracing. So it, it's really fast in that regard. It's almost like a, a video game system in a lot of ways, but using engineering data, it's, it's extremely fast that way. Can I show a bit here, maybe? Yeah, so switch maybe, to demo. <laughs> maybe to explain that a little better, let me go back to this file. So this infill is, is basically the way you can picture it. This is essentially a, a wave equation, which we plot through this space. And this is, this is quite literally what we store. We store an equation for this surface, and we can plot it through any size, any size shape. So let me build this up here. So this is the same file size within a kilobyte. Um, all we're doing is replotting re the bounds of this function. And then when we transfer it into a curvature here, all we're doing is a coordinate transform. So it's, it's all just evaluating mathematical equations, which is very fast. The rendering is then we ray trace that mathematical field. And so that's what Alex was describing earlier. Yeah, and also just, you know, when we would say lightweight, we it's if you're doing a purely implicit model, it's maybe a megabyte because it's it's really just storing those functions. Yeah, that is quite incredible. Um, guys, maybe maybe one more question if you don't mind. Um, are other software companies modeling with this technology? Did you invent it? Who else is using it? Yeah, so um, I would implicit modeling has been around kind of in different contexts for a while now. Um, I would say with recent technology advances with GPUs and things like that, it's becoming more and more prevalent, especially in things like Unity or really complex game systems where they need to work with large terrain and systems like that. But our, our kind of system and, and platform really has a lot more control and flexibility and like what you you could do to work with and modify these fields. So I would say, as far as I know, we're the first real system to work with this in the context of design engineering, mechanical engineering, and, and things like that. Okay, very good. Thank you for that, gentlemen. Alex, if you could jump over to the next slide and we can wrap things up. Cool. Um, there's still a few more questions out there. I think they'd be best answered on an individual basis. So as promised, we will follow up with you guys individually. Um, as Alex said, if you'd like more information regarding uh, the software and checking it out, send us an email, sales at entopology.com. We can start you off with a personalized demonstration and possibly set you up with a copy of it. He also mentioned our, our VP of uh, product, Blake Quarter, who has done a blog post already and will be doing several more, please bookmark that page and topology.com slash blog. And we'll have uh, several blogs coming out in the near future regarding this technology and this topic and many others. So, of course, go to our website and topology.com to find out more information. And, well, of course, we'll be having more of these technology informational sessions. So we hope to see you at another one in the future. So that concludes everything that we have for you today. Thanks again for coming, everybody. We sure appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Thank you.